Hizmet then is the people who are engaged in this volunteer movement. They are now active in over 160 countries around the world. It's interesting that most of the volunteers are Muslims, but not all. And the people whom these volunteers serve are often non-Muslim. So this is not a movement of Muslims helping Muslims, but of people inspired to help all persons. So for me, probably the central question is, why do people do this? Why do they upend their lives and travel to different countries to be engaged in this sort of volunteer work? Well, they're clearly inspired by a teacher named Fethullah Gulen. And what inspires Mr. Gulen? I've often wondered that question as a non-Muslim. Um, I think it is this person. This is his book on Prophet Muhammad. I think Mr. Gulen is inspired by his vision of God's prophet the way that most Hizmet followers are inspired by him, by Mr. Gulen. This image of the prophet lies at the center of everything that he does. And it's my interpretation as an observer of the movement that he's so transformed by that image, that internalizing of God's prophet, that that is what drives his work and that has made him an inspiration for so many people around. The importance of the Glen movement, in my opinion, is to personify both that deep spiritual root, the mystical and intellectual side of Islamic tradition, the practice and the theory, and its humanistic implications for humanitarian aid, for democracy, for education, and for the dialogue among the world's religions. Still, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, the most important thing about a movement are its followers. And I'm excited that you'll be able to hear from three of those young followers today. My name is Muazzam Idris, and I'm from Nigeria. Currently, I'm uh, doing my uh, PhD in chemistry at the University of Southern California. Nigeria actually is really blessed with uh, ethnic groups, around 130 different ethnic groups. And uh, Nigeria has two main religions, which is Christianity and Islam. Uh, since Nigeria got its independence, there are, have been many religious tensions, um, um, usually because of uh, poor understanding of uh, religions, both the Christianity and Islam, and also lack of dialogue between these two religions. And so that's why actually uh, these schools were opened in Nigeria. The first one that started in the capital, where I got the scholarship, was opened uh, or established in uh, 1998. Uh, I went there uh, to start my education. Um, it was really uh, difficult to cope with the environment because um, while I was studying, it was a really local school where we have only uh, Muslims uh, in the northern side. But when I was there, it was mixed with Christians and Muslims and different cultures, and it was a little bit difficult uh, to cope with. So one thing that uh, the school I noticed that we had, um, so uh, one of the activities we usually do is uh, we have usually meet, we had meetings on Friday nights, and in these meetings, what we do usually we pick a topic, uh, we discuss the topic uh, both in uh, Islamic and uh, Christian uh, point of view. And I believe uh, these meetings, small meetings we had on Fridays, opened my mind actually to view uh, other religions uh, uh, differently. Also, not only me, uh, the other uh, students also, I mean, from, uh, I mean, Christians, Muslims also, definitely they felt free to ask more questions to other religions uh, in a respective manner. And I believe um, now we have many uh, graduate students, not only me, um, students uh, doing uh, medicine, we have engineers, we have um, uh, business uh, men, we have all sorts of uh, graduates uh, from these schools and I believe uh, these people because uh, how they were trained morally and also uh, academically uh, is a really good opportunity uh, to change Nigeria. So my name is Marina, an Ismet High School graduate. I am Cambodian, but today I'm sitting over here and talking to you all, not as a Cambodian, but as a global citizen, as a global future. Today, 
more than 59 million children, 59 million children that are out of school due to various reasons, poverty, war, social and political instability, lack of educational access, and so on. And while I am attending a good university in the United States, more than 59 million children never get a chance to even sit properly studying in a classroom. I am a fruit of an Ismet school, and once and always be. And today I brought with me the seed of my plant, the seed of my fruit, so that we can all today plant it together. But I need to ask from all of you to water this seed and take a good care of it so that the plant of peas will grow to its fullest potential. It is not only the world leaders, it is not only Mr. Glenn's duty and responsibility. It is my, it is your, it is our duty and responsibility to make sure that every child is in school and that the world will be in peace through education. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mustafa Jarahovic, and I'm coming from Bosnia. In 1993, 1994 actually, the four Turkish teachers deciding to go to Bosnia. In the, in the middle of the war, they came by bus, transporters, and walked to the entrance of that tunnel that linking Sarajevo from our free territory. Uh, and they waited for a couple of days over there because to enter in the city, you need a permission like permission letter from the government or uh, soldiers or army to go in the city. And uh, the, our soldier, Bosnian soldier, asked them, our teachers, why are you waiting here? Are you fighters? Are you soldiers? You want to fight? No, we are not soldiers. We are teachers. Okay, what do you want to do in Sarajevo? There is no electricity. There is no food. There is no water. There is no nothing. Only grenades, hunger, and the snipers. And they said, we want to open the first private school in the Sarajevo. And our soldiers laughed, like, how come, like, in the like, middle of the war, you, you, are not, you are not able to see the, where is this ending? And uh, they went through, and they, and they came to Sarajevo, the city, in that time, that forgotten by everyone. And uh, in, in, in 1999, I, yeah, I in, in, enrolled in that school. In that school, it was the first school that, that after the war, under the same roof, we, I had friends from the Orthodox Catholics, like Pravoslav Serbians, and I had friends like uh, Roman Catholics, Croats, at the same classroom. And it was impossible to imagine after the war in Bosnia to bring that kids together. For example, still in Bosnia, you have the... Uh, like system, uh, two schools under the same roof. What does that mean? Like same, uh, same building, first floor is for, uh, for Catholic kids, the second floor is for Muslim kids. Uh, in, the sc in that school, we was together. The, in that time, the Serbian ambassador sent his son to, the, uh, to our school, to his med school. It was a big deal. Can you imagine the Serbian Diplomat are sending his son to the Tur Turkish school with the Muslim kids and the other kids right after the war. It was impossible to imagine, but it happened. Google Award for Best Educator uh, won the lady, actually our teacher from Bosnian, uh, Bosnian, uh, Bosnian Hizmet School. And it was amazing for Bosnia. <laughs> 